so good evening everybody at the onset uh, i like to thank dr banshi sir for uh, making a part of this uh, wonderfully organized conference i wish i could have attended the conference physically Be- because of the unavoidable circumstances i have not able to do that but uh, no worries uh, virtually we can always meet up and i'll thanks dr sandeep for the nice words so um, <clears throat> a deadly trio diabetes heart failure and renal dysfunction so first of all greetings to all of you from bangalore so patients with type 2 diabetes are at increased risk of complication such as cvd and heart failure if you see in this slide approximately one in three patients with type 2 diabetes has cv disease there is a two to five fold increased risk of hospitalization for heart failure in patients with type 2 diabetes cv disease is the leading cause of mortality in patients with type 2 diabetes so this slide looks busy but this is what actually there is a vicious cycle circle between the type 2 diabetes and heart failure you can see on the right hand side about the pancreas and left hand side the heart and you can see the various mechanism which are in interlinked between hyperglycemia and heart failure and in between comes the obesity so we have a circle which is interlinked between the diabetes and the heart failure so effects of diabetes on outcomes in patients with heart failure you can see in this slide the patients with diabetes um, uh, like cv death for for uh, hospitalization for heart failure if you take in this slide so patients with diabetes have a higher risk of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction when compared to the diabetes with high, next comes the uh, diabetes with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction if the person is having no diabetes the incidences of uh, reduced ejection fraction and preserved ejection fraction comes uh, down so what does this slide says is the persons with diabetes are more prone for heart failure so the patients with type 2 diabetes are also at increased risk of complications such as ckd you can see in this how the things are interlinked between type 2 diabetes cv disease and ckd so ckd affects up to 40% of the patients with type 2 diabetes diabetes and hypertension is the cause of more than 80% of the end stage kidney disease cases worldwide life expectancy is reduced in patients with type 2 diabetes and early ckd by 16 years 10 more years than the ckd alone so different pathways and networks networks involved in the initiation and progression of type uh, diabetic kidney disease you can see here uh, diabetes the pathophysiological factors like increased ras increased tgf <clears throat> increased age increased tgf alpha increased tgf beta leading to intercellular signaling pathways leading to increased pkc leading to increased transcription transcription factors like increased nfkb leading to glomerular hypertrophy mesangial expansion tubulo interstitial fibrosis and inflammation glomerulosclerosis and kidney fibrosis <clears throat> you can see in this slide the normal kidney morphology and the structural changes in the diabetes mellitus you can see the diabetic kidney disease includes structural changes including the thickening of the glomerular basement membrane fusion of the foot process loss of podocyte with denuding of the glomerular basement membrane and the mesangial matrix expansion which is depicted on the right hand side of the slide when it comes to 10 year mortality in type 2 diabetes by kidney disease manifestation you can see the on the left hand side you can see there is no kidney disease is only 4.1% if there is albuminuria it is 17.8% if it is impaired gfr 23.9% albuminuria and impaired gfr the 10 year mortality rises up to 47% so the presence of ckd increases the risk of cv morbidity and mortality up to 67% of patients with heart failure are estimated to have ckd the risk of cv death increases as kidney function declines the presence of ckd in patients with heart failure increases the risk of mortality by 25 to 28% so 
So patients with type 2 diabetes have multiple risk factors that contributes to CRM diseases. What is CRM? Cardiorenal metabolic diseases. Over half of the patients with type 2 diabetes are reported to be obese. So type 2 diabetes reduces life expectancy by six years. Type 2 diabetes further reduces life expectancy in patients with cardiorenal comorbidities. So the diseases of cardiorenal metabolic systems share many of the same risk factors. There is numerous time points to retard progression. You can see in this slide how the things are involved <clears throat> from um, heart, that is MI and stroke, chronic kidney disease, heart failure, end-stage related disease, all are interlinked. That is the reason my topic is about the cardiorenal metabolic systems that are interlinked to each other. The vicious cycle we know, the type 2 diabetes, the diabetic kidney disease and heart failure leads to sodium retention. This is a cycle where one and each, uh, each other are interlinked. Coming to the cardiorenal syndrome, there are like five types of cardiorenal syndrome. The first one type is the acute cardiorenal syndrome. The second one, you can see on the left hand side of the slide, the chronic cardiorenal syndrome. Third one is the acute renal cardiac syndrome. Fourth one is the cardiac chronic renal cardiac syndrome. The uh, fifth one is the secondary renal syndrome. So these are the five types where a person can develop cardiorenal syndrome, uh, syndrome, which are interlinked to each other. So depending upon these, the management protocol changes. So the traditional hypothesis of cardiorenal interactions, you can see in this slide, heart failure, renal hypoperfusion, hypo, hypo that is low, fail, uh, low flow, leads to increased renal vasoconstriction, renal tubular hypoxia, leading on to acute tubular necrosis. <clears throat> you can see in this slide, the hemodynamic mechanisms in cardiorenal interactions. Like it looks a busy slide. You can see how the increased cardiac congestion and increased right heart arterial pressure, increased venous pr pressure, leads to decreased cardiac output, increased effective arterial blood volume, increased fluid load, overload, and increased salt and water retention, leading to increase sympathetic nervous system activity, increase RASC, increase inflammation, and immuno, immune cell activation, leading on to increase fibrogenesis, leading to loss of renal function, that is decrease re, uh, GFR, decrease urine output, <clears throat> decrease sodium excretion, and decrease water excretion. A neurohormonal mechanism in cardiorenal interaction, once again, you can see in this slide, uh, very pictorially de de depicted in this slide, so how the cardiac output matters in the eventual loss of renal function. So cardiovascular disease is associated with mechanisms leading to the progression of heart failure, CKD, and our acute kidney injury. You can see in this slide the various mechanism, how the things heart failure goes on are interlinked between the chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury as well. The hemodynamic mechanisms where like fluid overload and retention of salt and water, renal and cardiac congestion, limited organ perfusion, vasoconstriction in hand organs, leading to the activation of RAS, activation of the sympathetic nervous system, leading to the cardiovascular disease associated mechanisms like chronic inflammation and activation of the cellular immunity, malnutrition, cachexia and wasting, bone, bone mineral disorder, acid-based metabolism disorder, anemia and cardiorenal anemia. So one most important thing is not to be forgotten is about the potassium. The association of serum potassium with all cause mortality in patients with and without heart failure, chronic kidney disease and diabetes. You can see in this slide how the baseline serum potassium plays an important role in the uh, incidences of heart failure, CKD, and diabetes. So serum potassium play a significant role. This particular study published in 2017, uh, 17, like relations 
shift between serum potassium mortality and conditions commonly associated with dyskalemias <clears throat> such as heart failure chronic disease and or diabetes mellitus is largely unknown what was the conclusion of this particular study was the mortality risk progressively increased with the dyskalemia and was differentially greater in those with heart failure ckd or diabetes mellitus so coming to an important aspect uh, in the management of this particular condition where the three things are involved that is diabetes ckd and heart failure you can see the first one is the nutrition and lifestyle changes that is the obesity uh, paradox protein high in vitamin d blood pressure dyslipidemia manage and glycemic control the most important drugs as of the now which is the blockbuster is the sgl2 inhibitors we have evidence with dapa heart failure credence dapa ckd emperor and the role of glp1 are uh, receptor analogs angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitor that is acubitrol valsartan as uh, seen in paradigm heart failure study and diuretics which can be a double edged sword <clears throat> now coming to an important drugs like hdl2 inhibitors i should say this is one of the molecule of the decade which we are going to hear in the next uh, couple of session by dr ak singh so then next comes to the ac inhibitors arb mineral corticoid antagonistics so careful about hyperkalemia and worsening egfr then comes to uh, cardio renal anemia treating with erythropoietin and iron ckd that is metabolic bone diseases with phosphate binders and sinalacalcet the newer age agents that nesiritide a recombinant form of human b type natriuretic peptide next is the serilaxin is a recombinant form of human relaxin 2 that binds to the g protein coupled receptor relaxin receptor that is the heart and kidneys coming to the heart failures with sgl2 inhibitors i am sure all of you are aware of this many uh, trials with sgl2 inhibitors that is the emperor reduce and dapa heart failure where shown the uh, beneficial effect of uh, sgl2 inhibitors in the management of uh, heart failure could dapagliflozin improve kidney and cardiovascular outcomes in patients with ckd that is a question always asked yes we can say among the patients with chronic kidney disease the risk of any composite kidney or cardiovascular outcomes or death was significantly lower with dapagliflozin than with the placebo so empagliflozin phase 3 empa kidney trial was stopped early due to the clear positive effect efficacy in people with chronic kidney disease so the rationale for apparent cardio renal benefit like diabetes cardiovascular and renal as of as of now the blockbuster molecule is the sgl2 inhibitors so the long arc before this vicious cycles like you put in if you take the three conditions the sacubitrol certain diuretics beta blockers then when it comes to metabolic effects of cardio renal benefits like reduction of mace cv death hospitalization for heart failure heart kidney uh, outcomes albuminuria egf or worsening you can consider sgl2 inhibitors then comes the statins as a role in reducing the albuminuria and cv deaths cv benefits ac inhibitors are arb which has got the cardio renal effects then the metabolic effects there is the cardio renal benefits which leads to reduction of mace cv death and albuminuria so ladies and gentlemen the take home message from my talk today is the, the three things that is diabetes ckd and heart failure are interlinked with a vicious cycle so identifying and treating aggressively from the beginning when in the long run you will be able to prevent the cardiovascular renal morbidity and mortality thank you for your patience hearing